Now, by the way that Eric DaCosta attacked this offseason, you could tell that these weren't the same old Ravens, but that was just on paper. We still had to see the final product, and we're not close to the final product yet, but from what we've seen with these Baltimore Ravens the past two games, especially yesterday, oh yeah, we in for a ride, and a good one too. Because what I love from the Ravens, and we about to talk about my post-game thoughts from the game that we all watched and loved yesterday against them Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, but what we saw from the Baltimore Ravens is a team that closed the deal, the team that finished the job. Last year, there were so many games where the Ravens had uh, double-digit leads. They had two-score leads, and so many of them they squandered away. They ended up losing. But in yesterday's game, they had a two-score lead, and the Bengals, they came marching back, and they got close. But the Ravens closed it out, and that was my favorite part about the game yesterday. Because the Ra they, Ravens did struggle at times. They, has, they struggled at times stopping the Cincinnati Bengals. But they found a way to get the job done, especially on offense. Because in the past, we've seen where the Baltimore Ravens, they'll have a two-score lead. And the offense will get very, very conservative. The offense will be like, you know what, let's just let's run the ball. Let's, let's kill a little bit of clock. Let's just, uh, we'll just try to get a little bit of yards here and there. Nothing too crazy, nothing too crazy. Not yesterday, though. Yesterday, they were trying to score points, and they did that. And I appreciated that so much because that was a just such a big contrast from how they operated before. Uh, with Lamar Jackson, you could tell, like, they, they, I, there's some games where he just – you, he just has to make a big play. He has to make something happen. And you could tell by his body language. And it's not a bad thing. It's not even him forcing it. But you could tell he is going to make something great happen. And he was just like, you know what? I am going to wheel this team to yards, to points, and to a win. And they did just that. And let's start off with Lamar Jackson. Uh, Lamar Jackson in this game, he had a couple of rough moments. Uh, there was the the fumble. He got to take care of the ball, man. And, and it's getting better week by week, but still, he got to take better care of the ball. But even though that fumble um, got saved because one of the Bengals defensive players, uh, they, well, I think it was illegal hands to the face. They had their face all in a, a I forgot which offensive lineman's face mask, but I was like, whew, because that, I was like, man, thank goodness, ooh, because that, that was big right there. Um, but and then there was one pass uh, right before halftime that was intended for Mark Andrews, and it was just off. It was just off. Thank goodness the defender wasn't closer because that would have been a pick six, easy. Uh, but with Lamar J and then earlier, the, he had missed Zay Flowers. He, he had overthrew Zay Flowers on a deep ball. Now let's start with that part right there, uh, because we we mentioned this in the stream. We mentioned this time in time before with Lamar Jackson and the deep ball. It, it gets it's something that gets overblown all the time. People say, "All right, Lamar Jackson, he can't throw deep. He can't throw the deep ball accurately." And with, with Lamar Jackson in the previous offense, what would be so frustrating for me to see is, "All right, if Lamar Jackson attempts a deep pass and he doesn't get it, then they just stop. They don't throw a deep pass again." His attempts were so minimal, so they they didn't let him attempt too many. So when you look at it from the stat sheet, like, oh, he missed that deep ball. Oh, man, yeah, he, he can't throw the deep ball. It's inaccurate. But that's why it's important to continue to allow him to take shots. And that's what they did yesterday. And I appreciated that so much, man. I really did. Because you, you can't just be like, all right, and this is just in life in general. You can't just try something one time and be like, all right, well, I didn't get it. I, I guess I'm not good at this. I guess I can't do it. No, you got to keep trying and trying again. So I, I appreciated the fact that Todd Munkin and his offense, they allowed him to keep trying again, and that's what you have to do. Unleash Lamar. Do not restrain him. Do not hold him back. You saw the way, and you see the way that he's been throwing that ball all over the field, the middle of the field, uh, from sideline to sideline. He's been putting that ball everywhere, and it's been a beautiful thing. Uh, just to watch Lamar continue to be unleashed and unlocked. This is something that we've been wanting to happen for a long time. And it seems like seems like they are trending in that direction now. Um, the touchdown pass to Nelson Aguilar. Beautiful. And they that's not that that's not a type of pass that they would do. That's not a type of pass that the Baltimore Ravens would do very often, like hardly at all. So to see that implemented in week two of the NFL regular season. 
<laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, these ain't the same old Ravens. Uh, Zay, one thing about Lamar Jackson, too, that I really, really appreciate because this is something that Lamar Jackson, a lot of times he won't do, but he did it yesterday, and that's take the chance. And really put that full trust in his wide receiver. And what I mean when I say that, not to say he hasn't trusted wide receivers in the past, because he certainly has, but that full trust. Zay Flowers had two guys on him. Two. And this was a deep ball. The degree of difficulty for completing this pass was extremely high. Lamar Jackson, Zay Flowers talked about it. He said, hey, they, they saw the play earlier, and Zay said he was open. And Zay said, hey, Lamar, hit me. I, I, I got you. And he did just that. Two people on him, deep ball, double cover. Zay Flowers made it. Short Zay Flowers made the play over two cornerbacks. So shout out to that, man. Lamar took the chance, and, and that's something that – because we know a lot of times Lamar will throw to the open receiver, but this time he threw to the double cover receiver, and, and I, I, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it because um, he took a calculated risk, and it paid off in a big way. Uh, Lamar Jackson in this game, the offensive line, shout out to the offensive line. Uh, Sam Mustafa, Patrick McCarry, those two stepped in and they did their thing. Uh, we did not hear Trey Hendrickson's name like all day. Um, there was some pressure here and there uh, from the Bengals defensive line, but not like crazy, man. Not like crazy. There was some times where Lamar had to make some people miss and he had to do a little shovel pass like the one adjust the ones to Justice Hill. Shout out to Justice Hill for being ready and available for those two. Because had Justice Hill went on some crazy route, and shout out to the Ravens offense for calling in and setting up the plays like that to where Justice Hill would be available for that, that check down. Because that, that made such a big difference. Because Lamar had to make some people miss in the backfield and just get rid of the ball, and he did that. And it ended up being completions and positive yards instead of him just throwing it away. So that was great to see. It was great to see the variety in the Ravens passing game. It, it, it was great to see it. I absolutely loved it, and we need more of that. A lot more of that. With Baltimore Ravens with the touchdown that Mark Andrews got. It was nice to see him back. And, hey, like we always talked about, Mark Andrews, once he gets that drop out of the way, he got to get his drop out of the way earlier. And after that, he'll, he'll be good to go. And he was, he was good to go from that point forward. Um, so, shout out to him. Uh, but, yeah, Lamar had a, a really, really good game. Uh, had the passing yards, obviously the two passing touchdowns, but then had some rushing yards too because that was necessary. It felt like on some of the runs, it felt like he was like holding back a little bit because we know Lamar, he, he wiggly, man. Lamar, he, he's like a joystick too, but it felt like he was like holding back a little a little bit, just a little bit. Um, so I'm not sure what that was about. Or, hey, I'm not even sure if he was holding back. It looked like it to me. That's, that's just my opinion. Uh, but he had a, a really, really good game. And, again, back to the offensive line, they did their thing as well uh, as far as pass protection and open up, opening up running lanes too. Uh, Gus Edwards led all the rushes and rushing yards and average as usual. Uh, he got he, – yeah, he got the touchdown too. And, and Gus Edwards continues to do Gus Edwards stuff. Gus Edwards is just waiting on the time where it's going to be like, all right, when, when am I going to be that feature back? Because – he still hasn't been it. I mean, and you, we know Ravens do super running back by committee. Um, but I know Gus is waiting like, hey, look, like, look, look every time I touch the ball. Look what happens. Look, look at this. Like, y'all got to do something for me now. But he, he, had a, uh, he had a good game. Justice Hill was solid. Um, the, now to the tight ends. Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews, of course, this was his first game back. He had a couple of catches. Uh, picked up some nice yards. Um, so he, he, was, he was back in the mix from jump. So that, that was a beautiful thing to see. Uh, as far as the wide receivers, Odell Beckham Jr., they were getting him involved early on. He got slammed down uh, on one play inside the red zone. And, and on that play, I was thinking, All right, hey, Lamar, take off, take off, take off. But Lamar said, no, 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 no. I see my wide receiver, and I'm going to give him an opportunity. And he threw it to him on point. Boom. Odell caught it. And they moved closer to the end zone. So that was a beautiful thing to see. But unfortunately, Odell Beckham Jr., he got hurt and left the game early. Uh, they said it's nothing serious. So that, that's obviously a good thing. Now, um, that's another thing, too. We're going to get back to the receivers. But just for the Baltimore Ravens, I think they were uh, three out of four. Uh, they, three out of four trips to the red zone, they, they converted into touchdowns. Um, so they were scoring touchdowns instead of field goals, and they had to in this game. Because, again, as we know, the Cincinnati Bengals, they quick strike team. They could get a touchdown just like that out of nowhere, as we know. 
But the Ravens didn't do that. We're going to talk about the defense in a little bit, but back to the offense. Again, they were closers. They were finishers, and that was so important for them to be. Back to the wide receivers. Nelson Aguilar. Nelson Aguilar had himself a game yesterday, making some tough, 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 tough catches. Tough catches. Um, Zay Flowers, of course, you know, Zay Flowers getting involved in so many different ways. After that deep pass that he caught in between both those two defenders, um, Zay, they, they – Feeding Zay Flowers again Because they really wanted him To get that touchdown Ravens will do that man Ravens will do that when they, You could tell When they really want Somebody to get that touchdown They really want Zay To get it He'll get it next game though Against the Colts He'll get his first Regular season uh, NFL touchdown It's, it's coming next week uh, But anyway it, it was a good game From him Rashad Bateman um, He wasn't involved Too much uh, so kind of quiet game let, let, let me see I, th- I remember him having maybe one catch I don't remember much besides that Let me see Rashad Bay Oh yeah three catches for 18 yards See, I didn't even remember them So and Isaiah likely he had one catch for 8 yards Oh Devin Duvernay Oh man That was a close one Oh, that was so close. I put it on the money too. Devin Duvernay, like it, he put it where only Devin Duvernay could get it, and the defender couldn't. And it, it was so, oh, it was so close on that deep pass down the sideline. I was like, oh, that that one hurt too, man. That one really hurt, but it, it's all good because they they took care of business. Um, so yeah, that was the offense, man. I, I one thing I did not like about the offense, I did not like um. One of them worked, another one didn't. But I didn't, I did not like the third and short. It was two third and short play calls um, where they called toss plays or pitch plays. And I just I, 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 I'm not a fan of that. The one of them worked. The second one didn't. But I wasn't a fan of either one. I'm always glad when there's something that I don't like and it still works. I obviously want everything to work for the Baltimore Ravens. But I just didn't like it because I feel like it makes it harder. If you got to get two yards. Uh, when you toss the ball back, you, now you got to go from getting two yards to getting like four or five yards because uh, you pitched the ball backwards. And so, I mean, that's, that's just me. Though. Uh, but Tom Monk, an offensive coordinator for a reason. We'll see how he continues to operate in those third and shorts. Justin Tucker, he missed the field goal yesterday. And I know a lot of Ravens fans are like, oh, man, every time Justin Tucker misses the field goal, doesn't end up good for the Baltimore Ravens. Now you can scrap that. You can scrap that. That's done. Uh, since he missed a field goal yesterday and then he made a field goal, of course, uh, but Ravens won. So that whole thing is out the window. Beautiful thing. Um, Lamar Jackson uh, against Joe Burrow. What is he? Two and one or three and one? I forget which it is, but against the Cincinnati Bengals, he like, I think, seven and one. So that's that's it for Lamar. Like, that was the big difference, man. That was such a big difference because... And, and when I when I was on with my guy uh, Kevin Ostrike, and I think I mentioned it on here, I, I expected the score to be 27-24. I thought it was going to go to overtime, but it didn't, which was nice. Ravens won in regulation, but um, I just uh, what gave me more confidence for this game was thinking about the playoff game last year. And even though the Baltimore Ravens lost, it was close, and it was a fumble. A fumble is what changed that game. But this, and they didn't have Lamar Jackson in that game. So now they had Lamar Jackson, they had Odell Beckham Jr., Rashad Bateman, Nelson Aguilar, Zay Flat. Like it is, they had a lot of difference makers on in this game uh, instead of in the last game. And they had some in the last game, but they had more this game, especially Lamar Jackson. So I felt like Lamar gave them that edge, and he did, he did. And it was more than just Lamar because uh, we got to talk about the. Let's talk about special teams first, because again, talked about Justin Tucker missing a field goal, but then he made one, but. Punt return for a touchdown. Oof, that was rough. That, that, that was rough seeing that. And the refs initially threw the flag, and then they're like, oh, no, 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 never mind. No flag. All right, touchdown. So, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, so that, that was frustrating. But, again, glad the Ravens overcame that. And speaking of the Ravens overcoming stuff, and then we about to get to the defense. The penalties in this game, yuck. They were disgusting. They were very inconsistent. Uh, it was a lot of bad penalties on both sides, on both sides. But... What I really appreciated about the Ravens in this game is that they did not l- allow the penalties to kill their energy. They did not allow the penalties to take them out the game. Uh, they did not allow the penalties to be a reason that they lost. Um, again, there were some really bad penalties. Ravens would move. Lamar would get a big gain on the ground. It was usually for those. For Lamar's big gains on the ground, they were like, uh-uh, nope, holding, bring it back. And hey, there was something that was justified. Like there was one on um 
Was it on Zyla? Uh, some, somebody was holding it. Like, it, it was clear holding. It was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's holding. Then there was another holding that they called, and there was no holding whatsoever. It was so bad. There was um, the illegal contact that they called on the cornerback that was covering Odell Beckham Jr. With Odell Beckham Jr., he initiated all the contact. And it, it was a bad call, straight up. But then there was the pass interference that they called on Brandon Stevens on Jamar Chase, where literally Jamar Chase just fell. Brandon Stevens did not interfere with the pass whatsoever. So, again, there were bad calls on both sides, on both sides, like terrible calls on both sides. But I'm, I was appreciative that the Baltimore Ravens did not allow that to stop them. So there was even one drive where um, I forgot when it, when it was. A holding call made it like first and 20 and another call made it like first and 30, something like that. So there was one point and then they did, a, a, I think they did a screenplay and they lost two yards. So it was like second and it was second and super long. But then they ended up getting a first down because they threw a deep pass to, I want to say it was to Mark Andrews, and then I think they ran it for the first down with Gus Edwards, I believe. But I forgot what the sequence of plays was, but they got the first down after the penalty yards, after being backed up a lot. So I was like, all right, Ravens. So I really loved seeing that. Now, something that, uh, else that I loved seeing was the defense. Defense going into this game, it was scary thinking about it because it's like, ooh, Jamal Chase, T. Higgins, two number one receivers, Joe Burrow, he could get hot at any time, Joe Mixon. And Joe Mixon, he, he, was, he, get, he was getting his every now and then. Um, but they held Jamal Chase down. I think he had like 34 yards or something like that. Let me let me check the exact numbers because um, it it was a beautiful thing to see. Yeah, he had, let me see, 31 yards. Oh, even better. Well, even worse in his case, but even better for us. But Jamal Chase had 31 yards. Uh, T. Higgins, he started off slow. Started off slow, but then he kept getting involved more and more and more. Um, and the touchdowns that he caught One was a little bit of a push off And they ain't, they ain't call it Okay whatever uh, And then another one The one on Ardarius Washington so, like, like, what, 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 what would you expect Ardarius Washington to do? To have him matched up against T. Higgins in the red zone I, I thought that was a big mistake by Mike McDonald Big mistake by Mike McDonald I would say put, if it's on the red zone uh, like, well, Especially on like the They was on like the 5 yard line Something like that I'd say Kyle Hamilton Just that size and physicality uh, one of the corners, Darby Rocky Singh, whoever. Oh, and shout out to Rocky Singh because that play, oh, that play, like, ooh, that, because that was a perfect pass by Joe Burrow. The quick little route by Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow threw it and put it in a perfect spot. But Rocky Singh played it even more perfect than both of them did because, and he played it through the whistle. He finished the play and knocked it out of Jamar Chase's hand for a touchdown. Oh, that, that was such a uh, such a beautiful play, man. Rocky scene just oh that 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 gave the Ravens so much energy. Then we got to talk about Geno Stone. Geno Stone, man. Geno Stone, man. Hey, look, man. We, I've been telling people like all Geno Stone need is is opportunity because that's been the only thing that's been holding him back from showing that he can start in this league because it's always been a, a really good veteran safety in front of him and that's not a bad thing. Uh, but that's the only thing that's been holding him back is opportunity. He showed in yesterday's game, like, hey, he can play. Ravens did not give up any deep passes. And we know these Cincinnati Bengals, they, uh, they are known for those big plays. Ravens ain't give up none of it. But Geno Stone on his interception, great interception, loved it. He read the play perfectly and executed his play perfectly. Got the pick, should have been a, a, a 102 yard or 99 yard, it should have been a pick six. I don't know what Geno said. I guess maybe he was just exhausted. He, he might have been mentally exhausted because he's like, man, and physically exhausted because the defense was out there a lot. They were out there for long periods of time, especially in the second half. But he, uh, he you got to get a pick six, man. Get that pick six. Oh, you know what I thought? I think he was thinking? He was probably thinking, man, if I get the pick six, yeah, we'll get a touchdown, but I got to be right back out here already, and I'm tired. I'm tired. So he was like, you know what, offense, y'all got it. But next time, Gino, next time, we ain't going to forget. But we're going to forgive you, but we ain't going to forget. So next time, cut it back in. Get, get, go, go get the points. But, um, yeah, man, defense did their thing, man. Uh, pass rush was pretty much non-existent. I know Jadavion Clowney did get the sack, so shout out to my guy. Jadavion Clowney got one. Um, so that is it. Jadavion, get your money, man. Get that bread. Um, that fair way, I think they said he was hurt because he really didn't play, like, Hardly much at all Especially in the second half But um, I think they said he was hurt I believe uh, They said it's not serious though So that's good um, But the pass rush was pretty much non-existent But the Bengals They were having Joe Burrow Get that ball out of his hands Fast Like right away Maybe that's why there weren't Any deep passes Or deep Yeah they, he didn't really throw any deep balls anyway So 
uh, which helped the Ravens out, but they had him getting the ball out fast, like right away. Um, I think they wanted to try to protect that calf as much as they could. They wanted to try to protect him from getting hit as much as he could. I know a lot of Bengals fans are saying that Joe Burrow still hurt. So, I get, hey, that's I guess we'll see. But, um, yeah, they, they were getting that ball out fast, man. So the pass rush couldn't. They, they couldn't do nothing, like nothing. Ravens tried to blitz. Whenever they tried to blitz, it was still ugly. They still couldn't get the – it was just – There was one time where they blitzed, though, and um, I think the tight end the, – oh, Irv Smith Jr., I believe, yeah. Joe Burrow threw to Irv Smith Jr. The Ravens had blitzed, and Kyle Hamilton made an open field tackle. And, oh, it was, he saved a big play. He saved a big chunk play because Irv Smith Jr. had so much room in front of him, but Kyle Hamilton made that tackle. I was like, oh, thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Hammy. That was beautiful. Um, so yeah, that was that, man. So shout out to the Baltimore Ravens, man. They got it done. They made it happen. Um, and now they play the Colts. They they bet they better not mess around and sleep on them Colts, man. Because Colts coming off a win with Gardner Minshew. We don't know if they're gonna play Anthony Richardson or Gardner Minshew. Whoever they play, regardless, they 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 better not sleep on them Colts, man. Because they they can't afford to. They can't afford to. This like. Got trap game written all over it, so it's important that Ravens don't fall for that. Uh, but this game, they Ravens were underdogs by a little bit. But um, again, like we always talk about with Lamar Jackson, he always gives the Baltimore Ravens a chance. Always, always. And it wasn't just him, but having him in against the Bengals because he'd been MIA for a lot of Bengals games recently. Uh, but he made a trip for this one, and it paid off. 